because we hadn't officially started, but I figure if we're going to keep going, but um, so that's, that's great news. That's great, great news. I'm glad, I'm glad for you all. Cause I was worried with the whole, uh, the whole smoke thing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then the train thing, but, um, and we can talk more about the train thing as we get to that, because I've got some more information as well. So yeah, no, I've been dealing with that too. I'm happy to chat about it. So good, good, good. Um, so let me just, uh, again, while we're waiting and hopefully she'll make it, I want to share where we are with the business development guide. It's still in progress. Got a couple pieces that we still need to make, but for those of you that, um, haven't seen it in a while, I just wanna take you through it. So again, the whole purpose of this has been to have um, a document online in print, however anybody needs it, that would take a prospective um, business owner through opening up and what they would need to do. So it's a brochure for tenants. This is obviously where they could make some notes. Kevin, this is obviously Kevin has not written his piece yet, but that's where it would say, welcome to New Canaan from Kevin. Uh, this is my piece on Again, you know, um, chair of TDAC and, and why it's a good reason to be here. Uh, Laura gets a plug in here too. And then, you know, some links to some of, uh, some of her happenings. Um, and then we move right into sort of where to begin. When we, when we sat down working through this, the first question that somebody who hasn't been through it before, and remember we had a couple of these um, businesses come to us uh, new businesses come to us and, and give us some information on, you know, what, what were the hurdles, what were the challenges. So um, this is basically, you know, how, how you even start and what type of business are you, which will then lead you to whatever avenue that you need to proceed down next. So that's where this page takes it. And I can send this all to you in hard copy. And you notice here, like the pink writing, we've still got some notes that we're working on. Um, this page was, um, this page and the parking page were sort of two challenging ones because we realized that a lot of people don't understand necessarily all the different business D, business A, and you know. So we tried to make those those variations as uh, and definitions as as easily understandable as as possible. But we're we're still working on that a little bit because that determines again wherever you're opening up a business determines what can be done in that particular zone. So this is where we get into describing um, what retail A zone is. And, you know, this would be helpful, I think, if somebody were thinking had options, right? They, mm -hmm. they want to open up a, I don't know, a retail store. Or they want to open up a spa or something like that. And it depends on uh, what where they can do that. So if they had choices, they could look at this and go back to this page and say, well, I'm looking at a you know place over here. Can I do this, that, or the other thing? So here are all the definitions. And oh, by the way, it's part of this process. So what we've done, um, well, we've been doing all our work on it. It's now been through all of the town departments because um, I, I really made sure everybody there had to look at everything and make sure everything was accurate. I wanted to make sure all staff names were act, act, uh, contact info and all that were all there. So. Um, so then we get into all the different town departments and every sort of uh, department has their page. Again, we're going to have live links where we need to so that uh, somebody who was looking at this um, electronically could access some of the information that way. Um, so this is obviously planning and zoning's page. And again, the contact info um, is there. Then we go to fire marshal, building department. And the, one of the things that we're waiting on right now, health department, um, the town of New Canaan has, well, I'll, I'll tell you about that. So the parking, parking was another challenging page just to figure out what we needed to tell them. Tax collector, town clerk, that's obviously an important one, anybody starting a new business. And then TDAC gets a nice little plug in the back. Um, Glass house, explore New Canaan, chamber, board of realtors, picture, old picture of downtown. I got to get a better picture there. And then this is the last page. So um, uh, one of the things that the timing in, on this is, is good in the sense that I know we've been sort of carrying on with this for a while, but um, the town has now decided to uh, go with this software called OpenGov. And basically right now our permitting process for a new business, a homeowner, whatever, to get things done is, um, it's pretty old school. You have to go out and fill out pieces of paper and then one department, and then they all get clipped together and each department has to sign off. 
This is going to be a software package. Oh, here's Nancy. Good. This is going to be software that will be shared by all the departments uh, so they can all see in real time what everybody's doing. And that's really important when a new business is starting up because, you know, building department has to sign off on something before, obviously, before they get the CO. But if it's a restaurant or something like that, health has to. So they'll all be able to see it in totality and it won't get sort of sit on on someone's shelf, if you will, or someone's department for a while. So that's going to come online in the next month or two. So we're going to um, we're we're going to sort of align the launch of the brochure with the launch of the new permitting process. We just thought that made sense. Um, so I know that was just a brief overview. I just want to show you. I, I know we've been talking about it for for weeks or months now, but um, and thanks to BJ, she's been doing the heavy lifting on that and following up on it all. But um, I think we're getting there. And I think it's going to be one of these things that once it's out there and it's used, it's just going to be, you know, part of just everyday business of people trying to get answers to, to questions of things that they don't know about. Oh, it looks nice. Do we have a lot of vacancies downtown now? It doesn't seem like it, right? No. Uh, Laura, you want to? No, there, there's really not too many. Um you know, and I think the next great frontier is going to be VD and Cross. I think there's stuff happening down there. A dry cleaner closed and 84 Sports went, to, you know, immediately took that space. Um, I was just talking to someone who wants to open a gallery, uh, like on the second floor above Plum Plum. So people are finding these interesting uh, spaces. But, you know, there still are a couple big ones and businesses will turn over. Um, right now, the only spot on Elm Street is the old Dunkin' Donuts, which I thought they had someone in there for. Um, and you've got a spot or two on South and, of course, the big ones on Main. But and that I think for sale now, right? The one on Main isn't the yeah. first. Yeah. yeah. And there was even a group that went in front of planning and zoning because they wanted to make apartments all upstairs. Right now, it's really old office space and there, there are a few, you know, folks in there, but there's no parking. There's no overnight parking in downtown. Um, so I think they, they kind of walked away. So I don't know what the status is, but that, that's the biggest one. You know, everyone feels like there's a lot because that McKenzie's is still open and that one on Main. But I think when this is done, I think, Tucker, we should do a little roadshow to some of the real estate offices. You know, most of them are residential. Absolutely. But um, make sure the board of realtors has like really make sure it gets in the right hands. Right. And for Nancy and John, whoever just dropped on, just, I, I look the way I look because I had cataract surgery today. So that's why I, <laughs> I can turn my video off, but I, it's easier to talk to you with it on. So anyway, um, yes, I think exactly Laura, once it's done, I think that's when we, we do a big announcement about it. To make sure that it's where all the places that it needs to be, certainly in all the town departments and have them. And as we presented it to all the town departments, we said, you know, we want this to help you all. We want this to, to keep a lot of the questions that they have to go to the town departments with at a minimum. You know, right now they ask, someone who doesn't know has to ask everything if they don't know it, whereas a lot of this will be answered in the, in the guide. So that's where we're at there. Um, I, I went, I'm skipping around here a little bit, but um, Laura and I have been talking for a while about, um, we want to do something more. We, we've spent a lot of time and a lot of resources with, and I think we've done a great job and a lot of you have been key to that, but uh, with our, with the cultural guide, um, certainly the October for design promotion and, and programs there, we've done a lot. Um, for the, uh, with unlocking CT. Um, and, you know, we, we did do many years ago before TDAC, the chamber and, um, and uh, the board of realtors did some, a series of videos that I think you all remember. There are three, a 30 second, a 90 second and a 60 second, I think video that still are live on. They're very evergreen. They're, they're being used they're, They live on the chamber website. They're on the town website. Um, but we felt like it was time for a refresher of those for a variety of reasons, just because it's time and things have really changed dramatically in our town in terms of the demographics and the library coming on board and that kind of thing. So um, we've luckily found this young man that um, grew up in New Canaan um, 
has been working over actually at Lapham Community oh, Center. I wonder if she, Nancy doesn't know she's, I'm gonna. Yeah. yeah I'm... Oh, sorry, Nancy. No, she's muted now. I know, I, 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 I muted her, but now she has to. Nancy, can you unmute now? There she I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Were you? I I can hear you. I'm just I'm walking in New York City, so that's why oh. I was muted. <laughs> no worries. You're you're uh, just go on to listen mode. You don't need to. Uh, if you want to just listen, thank you for being here. That's dedication. Um, yeah, dedication. <laughs> right. So so we were talking about you know should we is it time to to redo some videos to some extent, and John. Everybody in my house is looking for me now. Um, and this gentleman sort of appeared and he's, um, we've already sat down with him and talked about some different ideas, but just wanted to sort of run it by all of you and think, you know, out loud, talk out loud about if we were to uh, embark on something like this, where do we think we should spend the, the not never mind the resources, but what what area it should be the we should focus on uh, going forward. And I'll just start by saying that I think we've done a lot with all the cultural pieces, and I'd love to see us now, you know, spend some time just focusing on the downtown. And and when I say the downtown, not necessarily, I mean the merchants, yes, but I'd love to see so many events happen in the downtown, which are part of the downtown. So I was thinking something along those lines, if we could put together sort of a, a, a a video of, of all the events um, when Nancy's joining again. So anyway, I'll stop talking. That's where I'm at with it right now, but just wondering what you all think about the idea and where we could use them and that kind of thing. I think it would be great. And a couple of thoughts that come to mind are highlighting the new library and then the uh, movie theater. Right. And that's exactly part of the rationale too. Mm -hmm. And the new yeah. movie theater, because it is an independent, um, we could use these as trailers in the theater, uh, they, would, they would show them. I also think all the parks and the green spaces, I mean, what I like now that I'm living downtown, I really like, I can you know go down to the restaurant or whatever, and then I can walk to Irwin Park, I can walk to Mead Park, I can even walk to Waveney. And I just think that's so unique in that you're still close right. to downtown, but you can go to all these beautiful green spaces. The walkability, yeah. Yeah, walkability. Yeah, I think, I think that's a good point. It's, it's this great business district, it's a transit hub, you know, when we get the train back, uh, you have, you know, major cultural center in the library and, you know, soon to be the playhouse and that, um, you know, you can come and it's really kind of one-stop shopping, you know, um, and really highlight uh, the uniqueness of the, you know, the mixture um, of all the businesses. Because uh, I think those last videos were designed to get people to move to New Canaan. Um, and now that's not a problem anymore. And I think these would be designed to, uh, I think, primarily get people to want to come visit and shop and dine and, you know, and walk. And then secondarily, I think just to make the people in New Canaan aware of everything that's here. You know, we're all so hyper focused, but, you, you know, Tucker and I experience this at the chamber. There's so many people that don't know all the stores that are downtown or don't realize that we've got a green link now from the nature center. So I think anything that just sort of can focus on that, uh, we can get some great, just just sitting at the terrace at the library, you can see so much. Um, so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think there's some drone footage, but yeah, putting that all together. So we're starting a new good effort. Sorry, huh? I mean, I was just going to say, I've had some friends come visit me and they're, they're all surprised how sophisticated, like you hear suburban and you think everyone's like soccer mom. And yes, we have that too. There's nothing wrong with that, but they're surprised at just the level of sophistication here, oh. which I think is, which is great, you know, and, and not just culturally, but just, just in general, you know, it's not this cultural wasteland, like people always think once you yeah. leave the city. So yeah. And caffeine yeah, I, and carburetors. Yes. Caffeine and carburetors. Exactly. Right, so that was one of the, what I'd like to do is um, have all of us between now, sort of in the next meeting, just or send me some ideas, but I'd love to give him some ideas of what we're thinking. I'm gonna have to go to Kevin and say that this would be a recommendation from TDAC if everyone supports that, that we that we go this route. Um, you know, we are starting a new fiscal year, so the funds are, are there, July 1. 
which is great. Um, remember these funds are not necessarily, you know, TDAC funds, but we're an advisory group. So we would make the recommendation and I don't even know on costs yet. I mean, I know what we spent the last time. That was a little bit of a different deal, but what, I, what the gentleman, if we end up going with him, when I early, when I met with him earlier, he said he needed some more um, sort of scope from us as to what we were looking at. And part of me was thinking, well, I would love to do, you know, almost seasonal of the special events. I'd love to have a year of video of the spring events, fall events, because there's so much that go on, right? The winter events, that kind of thing. And then, um, and then some of the evergreen, like the parks and, and, and all of that, that we, uh, that we all take for granted. So how would the video be disseminated? You know, is it just on our own channels or would there be a paid spend to boost it on Instagram so, and other places? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I would love to be able to do all that. I've just, you know, we, we're going to have to get some, uh, you're going to have to help us with that. I think Alan, because mm -hmm. I I've never really, the last ones that we did really just were on our own, right? Laura, I mean, we, we promoted them on our own, but we didn't pay to put them anywhere. Did we? Yeah, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I think that was part of the deal with the, the PR firm we worked with. I mean, just Rachel and, you know, they, uh, she, she got some PR for them. I, mm -hmm. I think also uh, Alan will break them into kind of reels and yeah. you know, smaller videos to, to tease people to go to, you know, the different places uh, that they're housed, whether on the chamber site, the town site, obviously. Um, and, you know, but yeah, I, I think we do need an effort to, uh, you know, a marketing plan once we get it in place. Yeah. So not and, just talking to ourselves. Right. I, I don't know. Maybe the firm that you have doing the Live New Canaan could help with that too, because they're doing your social, but I think it's, key i mean you should put it on tiktok i mean i really think there's there's a lot of fun things you could do there's so many memes on tiktok about fairfield county and you know oh, yeah. so, uh -huh. <laughs> correct that yes 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 for sure all right well um i mean alan we'll definitely need you to help us with this advise us along the way sure um what i think the next steps would be um that we should start some sort of an outline of what, I mean, I, I guess that brings us back to the million dollar question of, you know, what is it that we're actually gonna ask him to produce for us? Is it, is it just a cover? I mean, I'd love, you know, 30 seconds of caffeine and carburetors. I'd love 30 seconds of the sidewalk sale. I'd love 30 seconds of uh, a taste of the town straw. I would have loved 30 seconds of the glass house, you know, event, that kind of thing. But um, that was, where I was going with it initially was just to ask him to be available to do that, a wave any concert, the 4th of July, just to have the B-roll, if you will, of all of that. And then once we've got that, and again, that would, you know, could happen seasonally. Once we've got all that in-house, um, then we sit down and figure out how we put it all together into something that means something that, that speaks to people. Well, you need a good editor on this. That's going to be key. It's not just getting the footage. It's it's yeah, somebody right. who can, can edit and understand that. So, right. And probably we need to give him more direction from, we need to kind of have a script and a theme, not necessarily a, you know, you know so when he's going out, um, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't end up just looking like a pile of, uh, of footage right. that we almost kind of need to have a, uh, hypothesis at the beginning of you know what what we're trying to show so that's in his in his mind as he's filming mm -hmm. what I think I might do is send everybody um the three that we did right just as a refresher just to see those three and then um sort of summarize <laughs> our conversation here for the benefit of the people that aren't uh haven't been able to join us and then um, ask for feedback from everybody on how we get this going. I can send you a little bit of what he sent me and some samples of what he's done, just so you can see the work that he, he has done. There's another young man in town who um, has done some work for the Waveney Park Conservancy. And this kid is like incredible. He's going off to school to do this. I mean, this is all he does, but um, the talent is here, you know, but they're gonna, they are, you know, they're, they're the producers, but yes, I think I think the editing piece is going to be key, and mm -hmm. and what the ultimate message is going to be. I mean, the message, the message was very clear of the other three. It was about you know sort of home. Home is home is here because we were trying to make everybody want to move here. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do that on Monday. I'll uh, I'll send out the three that we have. I'll send out what he's done and um, summarize this and just ask for some feedback. So I'd like to get him. I, at the very least, I am going to have him get out there. Um, I think if, if you guys are all right with us making the recommendation, you know, that he get out there and start getting just the footage. I don't want to miss some events this summer just so that we have them in hand because that's going to be key to, I, I just don't, you know, as I said, I don't want to miss out on that. So I'll, I'll, we'll make a list, Laura, of events that he should really be trying to. Yeah. Why don't you send around some of the work, other work that he's doing? I will. So everyone can do. Okay, just making a note. All right, um, business development. Oh, the other thing I put on here was special events schedule. Um, just so you know, I, one of the one of my jobs over at Town Hall is I'm the special events coordinator for the town. So any event that's happening on public property that's over 150 people um, is, is I'm required to know about it and get an application, that kind of thing. We've been having a lot of um, issues lately where there's been several events that have just happened. We didn't know about it. And I just, I just wanted to put it on here and just say that it's always a good idea if along your travels and anything, any organization that you're involved with or whatever, if you're having an event, it's always a good idea just to check with me. Most nine times out of 10, like, you know, Greg, your event was all on private property, right? You, you, yeah. It's all, everybody knows about it. But sometimes, you know, like the Juneteenth event that happened at um, historical site of the day, it was a great event. I did know about it. But, you know, they brought in food trucks, food trucks, we have to food trucks have to be um, approved by permitted. the health department. Right. Yeah, and permitted. So it's always a good idea. And, and I, I feel like there's more events popping up. In fact, I hope some of you saw the make music day that was going on all around town yesterday. There were for music, uh, I saw them at the historical site. They took over the pop-up park. There was music going on and being made all around town as part of Make Music Day yesterday, which was fabulous. So um, I added that on there just so that you all know that this, this process does exist and we, we take it very seriously. So if you have any events or ever have any questions, just to, uh, to let me know. Um, Laura, you wanna sort of follow up on the, the cultural di district and what we learned with that? Um, so following up on Jack's question about should we pursue getting a state cultural uh, district designation, uh, I reached out to Tucker and I's contact in Ridgefield who really did the work and they do not have any metrics yet. Uh, you know, they have a group, group sort of like ours that's formed and, you know, they're really moving in the same direction we are, which, you know, uh, making all the cultural aspects now. Jack's together. Now. Okay. Uh, um, I should pull up her email um, because what when I went through it, I realized we're doing all these same things. Um, what was her name, Tucker? Gloria um, Norwit. Glor Glory, right? Glory Here Norwitz. Yep. Yeah. Uh, So one of the stuff that they've been doing is um, they created a list of all the businesses, ground floor businesses. You know, we have that. Um, they created a map, kind of a, a professional map. We have not done that, uh, but then they printed it. Uh, I guess a local store has it. They have a kiosk in, in downtown. Um, they obviously have a digital version. They put the signs up around town that they have a designation. Um, let's see, go to time. Uh, and what they, don't, what they don't have is any sort of metrics um, for, for what they have done. Um, hold on, I'm going here. Uh, uh, they've compiled a list of cultural assets. They created street signs. Uh, they created a downtown map, created window stickers. Uh, they've created an annual cultural district award, um, and they got they fought really hard for some of the ARPA funds, and they did a really good job. But they do not; um, they're trying to figure out how to put metrics to feel if the designation is helping any of their cultural assets. 
uh, they want to collect data and assess the increases in visitor numbers, uh, but they're still figuring out how to do that. So, um, but you know, I think they're they're working just like we are to try to highlight their downtown and and the cultural assets that are there. And when we discussed with her, you know, all the things that we were doing, um, I mean, she really felt like we were doing a lot of the same things. We have some some nuances in the work that we've been doing. Um, but she reminded us, and I think this is what we talked about the last time, she reminded us that, you know, she took this on as basically almost a full-time job. I mean, this was her baby and she's been leading it, the whole charge for a couple of years. So um, I think the only, um, I mean, there were a couple of things in there that, that we are not doing, but that is a goal. I mean, we, the, the parking situation is something that we've always talked about in terms of wayfinding, and that's something that we still continue to explore. Uh, so that was kind of it. I mean, you know, she she wasn't available to join us tonight, so um, that's why we're just reporting back now, but that was just a follow-up to our last meeting. Oh, Jack, you yeah. were able to get on. You, you there? Yes, yes, okay. I, I, I finally got on. Will she be able to join us in the future? Well, I mean, I, I mean, we could invite her. I just don't know if it, it, it's up to the group. It's up to if everybody thinks that it's worthy of the of us to bring her back and um, talk to us about it. It's completely up to you all. I don't know if you heard, Jack, but they they are still figuring out how to get their metrics. Um, you know, they have a subcommittee. It was the cultural district subcommittee um, which they originally formed to get the designation and now they're working on a strategic plan and figuring out how to collect data and assess so it could be a year from now uh, that they'll have some more uh, information uh, but what what their focus has been is marketing their cultural district designation to the stores and to the residents uh, getting signage and maps and all that sort of stuff. So that's been their priority, uh, and, but they don't have any hard data yet. So Jack, this was, Laura and I, as you know, had met with them a while back and then we followed up with them since you brought it up at the last week, the last meeting. So we had a follow-up with her and that's when she told us, you know, things were still moving along the way they were, they don't have any metrics per se and they're working on the strategic element. So we were thinking that, you know, maybe it would be wise to talk with her a couple of months down the road when she's got, you know, some of that already laid out because there was nothing really new to report at this time from what, from our discussions with her. Yeah, but I'm just kind of curious about what they expect to get from this once they do all of this. Uh, and maybe she could come and talk about the benefits of doing it. Well, they don't know the benefits yet. Yeah. I mean, you know, they went out and did it and, you know, are working hard on it. So obviously they believe it, but you know, I think right now they're still figuring out the metrics and, and you know, they've spent time rolling it out. So you know, what, I don't what do they believe, that. what do they believe is going to happen once they do it? I mean, what, what would, what motivated them to do it? I think it opens up some grant opportunities, mm -hmm. possibly. Um, and that's something else that I wanted to talk about as part of our other business, but I think it could potentially open up some grant opportunities. I think it gives them um, a platform from which to sort of network with other cultural districts, right? And some cross marketing and that, that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, she, as I say, she's been very open and available to Laura and I every time we've reached out, but she said they're right now sort of trying to gather all that information. So they know that if it was really, she was very dedicated towards it, but it was just her. She's, there's nobody else that's been helping her with it. So she was waiting and seeing how uh, with this next, the next steps. So we can invite her back, but she, you know, as she said to us, I'll know more in a few months. So that's when we thought it would make sense. Well, I mean, I just feel it would be beneficial for someone like that to come speak to us. Okay, well, we'll see what the status is. I mean, I, you know, again, it's, it's, I want the group to, we're gonna, everyone's going to sit here and spend the time. It's, it's totally up to everybody else. Um, also, if it's grants, would Greg Riley be someone to talk to? Well, so Greg Riley is a, the town grant writer. Um, 
there is some crossover. Well, Greg did come to one of our meetings uh, yep. two meetings ago. Um, mm -hmm. So there is definitely some crossover. He, he's been helping with some of the sort of private public partnerships and that kind of thing. Grants are a whole nother, uh, we're learning that there's grants and I, that's why I was gonna put this out there to all of you too. Um, we actually had a grant come to us, Bob Doran made us available, made, made us aware of a grant, a Pura grant that we didn't know about. Greg hadn't seen it and um, we applied for it. Greg gave us a few hints on how to do it, but basically we applied for it and we gr were granted $128,000 to um, redo the AV and audio systems in the town hall buildings because Zoom and, and electronic meetings and that kind of thing are here to stay. And, Right now, we sort of have it cobbled together. I think we do it better than most towns, but um, it's not perfect. I mean, if you all could see me before every board of selectmen meeting, I'm crawling under desks and connecting things and moving cameras. And so now we're gonna go back to a room that's fully equipped to handle meetings like that because again, these meetings are here forever. Um, so my point on the grants is that uh, if, if you all ever hear of a grant that you think could benefit um, the town or whatever, I certainly let us know about it because some of them Greg doesn't hear about. It. Now he can't, he can't go out there and do grants for the nonprofits and things like that, but there are some crossovers and he, he asks us to let him know if there's any so that he can be aware of them and make sure we're applying for them. But would doing something with, that like uh, Richfield did benefit him in getting grants? I'm sorry, you broke up. I didn't hear you. So they they're doing this you said to get grants also this is one reason could. they're one setting of, up one this. of the benefits could be that it helps you get grants the, the other thing that i've learned in talking with him about grants is that you know everybody can apply for all these grants i saw the governor yesterday announced seven million dollars worth of good to great grants were awarded and uh mm -hmm. carriage barn got a hundred and some odd thousand dollars avon theater got five hundred thousand um a theater wow. got 500,000. Um, the powerhouse had applied as part of their project. And unfortunately they didn't, they didn't get it. Uh, I'm trying to think what else in this area. Uh, oh, Bush Holly house and Greenwich got 500,000. But one of the things that Greg has told me, and I've heard from others is you really need to be careful because you can apply for all these grants and they do look back and say, Oh, uh, when they're when they're looking at the approval process. Well, you know what? We kind of just got to last week. You know, it might be for a whole different project. So you have to be a little strategic about what you apply for, so that you're not, uh, you know, taking away future opportunities that might be more appropriate. Just for your data, the glass house also applied for a good to great, and we got turned down for the brick house. Okay, what did you apply for? What what part of it? Uh, gosh, I'd have to look it up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure, and I, hey, Greg, I don't know how many grants you get on a regular basis either, but um, I know when you speak with the politicians, they tell you frequently they'll look when they're when they're looking at a grant, you know, submission group, and they'll say, "Well, no, we already gave to to New Canaan." So, but to bring it back to the cultural district, um, Greg, um, that is just when you ask the question, you know, why would they do it? I think there's a number of reasons that they would do it, but. Um, I just, I just need direction from this group if we think it's worth pursuing. I personally feel like we're doing much of what um, she told us that they were doing, but, um, and we would need someone to lead it. Even if she came in and told us that it was the next best thing, I just don't know who would be the glory nor what there to do it. Uh, does anybody else have any thoughts? I mean, I think it would be interesting to hear what their expectation was and then have some data that says, yes, it worked out or no, it didn't before we expend resources to try and make it happen. So maybe that's the message, Laura. We go back to her and ask her that she could keep up, keep in touch with us. We'd like to have her come to a meeting, but we want it to be at a point where she's got something really to share beyond what she's already shared with us. Yeah, I think um, that makes sense. Yeah, and that, you know, we're very interested in it. We just don't know. We'd like some of those basic questions of, you know, what are the expectations? And if she could let us know what time of year that she might know that, and then we could schedule her in. Good. Yeah, we'll reach out to her in the fall and see how they're doing. And, you know, hopefully get, you know, once they have some stuff that she wants to share with us, uh, <clears throat> I 
and I know she'd be happy to hop on. Okay. Yeah, I just think it'd be beneficial if the whole group heard what she had to say. Yeah. I think it would be important. Okay, so we'll bring her in when we when we, when she has more information to share beyond what's already been shared. Um, we just touched on this um, momentarily on Metro North, and I just wanted to bring everyone up to speed. So yes, I think Greg, what you're hearing is what we're hearing at Town Hall. It's really been a non-event. I think a lot of it was for for our commuters anyway. I think really giving them all the information early on and finding out where they could park and what their options are really helped. People who are riding the bus are saying it's not a big deal. Um, and if you get the express, uh -huh. if you get the express, yeah. yeah. Um, I understand that they've added a couple of cars so that this, the people were worried, well, if I get on late, am I going to get a seat? I think people are getting seats. I mean, I think they're full, but I think people are getting seats. And the only thing that I can tell you is I was out there the day because we've been sending um, somebody down to just check on the sort of the Darien situation every day. And, Certainly Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, those are the days that seem to be the biggest, the most popular. But um, the, the workers, the, the Metro North folks or the DOT who were out there working, said they think they're on schedule, if not a little ahead of schedule, because they've had um, good weather. Ah, okay. So, you know, keep our fingers crossed, because I think we got like 10 days now, and, and they'll work in the rain. It doesn't just mean it has to be dry, but they certainly can't work when there's thunder and lightning. Um, so, um, you know, we're still holding on to the Labor Day, uh, you know, back online, but we'll, we're going to have to kind of wait and see. I've been commuting. I don't go in every day. Um, and I have to say, I drive to Darien. I feel like as long as I get there before eight, because I yes. do think after eight, I think you're taking a chance because, you know, by... 7.30-ish when I get there, it's almost full. The, the Where, are you going to the main station or are you going to Route Nights? I'm going to Darien. The, um, yeah, yeah, cause it's all, it's actually only about 12 minutes from downtown to Darien, I find is, you know, if you don't- We're you know. actually a little concerned that everybody won't be coming back, but they'll-, they'll well, like, I have to people. say the train I've been taking only stops in after Darien and only stops in the Route and Heights. So it's actually yeah. quite nice and it's, you know, under an hour, so. I know. It's, it's, you do get used to that, but it is crowded, I will say, but everybody gets a seat on that train. But um, yeah. I was definitely worried the first week if I was going to get a parking place, but it seems to, I think with summer, it's, you know, not as much of an issue, but. And we did add on um, the owner of the new Darien Commons there at Norton Heights, that, um, uh, that housing uh, complex there. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not, they're starting to fill up, but not full and he put 40 spaces on for boxcar. So the nice thing about that, which is $6, is it four or six? I can't remember now, but the six, point is seven. that, is it six? The point is that you're guaranteed a spot. Like if you reserve the spot the night before, yeah. you know you're getting a spot. So there's not that stress of, oh my gosh, what if I get down there late and I don't have a spot? I asked a broker, I said, have you had any issues with people that moved here and didn't know that was happening? And, and she said, no, not really. She said the bigger issue is those Peter Pan buses look like they're out of the 70s. And everyone's like, yeah. what is well, and the guys dress like pilots. They're all in clothes. They try to look like they're yeah. pilots. <laughs> yeah, but no, it, it's um, thank goodness, right? I mean, but we just we planned for the worst and hope for the best, but it does seem to be. And then there's that whole other group that commutes into New Canaan that we were worried about. Uh, on the bus, but um, we're not hearing much of anybody, anything from anybody. And so I, I take that as no news is good news. Okay. So let, let's just hope it gets back online as they said it, uh, it said it does. So um, now, now that we've got Nancy on, we've got a good enough crew. Did I see how she was on? Maybe she bounced off, but um, I do need to get the minutes of the those two meetings. Uh, I can't read because I just had my cataract surgery, but it looks like March 9th and May 18th. So we need to ask someone to make a motion. Hopefully everyone read them. Um, motion. Who makes the motion, Alan? And we have Laura as a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good. Aye. Thanks. That's housekeeping. Um, we don't meet again until September 7th. But before then, can you all just bring us up to date on what's happening in your your worlds and all that you're working on? Greg, why don't you kick it off being that you just finished your successful event. What else have you got going? So we're running tours um, Thursdays through Mondays. 
they've been well subscribed. Uh, the event was very successful. Attendance was great. Uh, we've got a couple of installations on the property, third year running of uh, uh, the colored garden, but also uh, some stone sculptures by Connecticut artist uh, Mark Menon and uh, getting good feedback on those and uh, you know, looking forward to continuing our tour season through mid-December. We will be picture. doing some more activities with the uh, with the new Canaan Library, but do not have firmed updates yet for this speaker series. Great. Anybody else? Meg, what have you got happening? Uh, oh my goodness. It's so hard to keep up with. Even as an employee of Grace Farms, there's so many things happening. So if you don't have one of these, I encourage you to stop by Grace Farms. I can bring, deliver one to you. This is our one third of the year programming booklet. So the highlights for the next couple of months are just a smattering of summer series. So we have a summer picnic series that we experimented with last summer. It was a huge hit. So, you know, lots of families out, outside. Um, the garden stays open a little later than usual. They get to see that. There are lawn games, food. Um, we also have a lot of nature-oriented series, including things like um, bees, pollinators, trees, invasive species, butterflies, produce. And we just had a great nature partnership with the New Canaan Nature Center where they came to our site and were able to present about their mission and um, some of their animal experts were there. And we hope to really continue that and build on our partnership with the Nature Center. Then they have a chance to talk about their mission in place as well. Um, and I think the other thing I'll mention for the summer is we have a, another summer music concert, which has been another experiment that's been very successful in the middle of July. And then we always have tons of events for kids. Um, so I'm, I was just trying to think about the downtown uh, video series. I'll, I'll brainstorm about, you know, maybe one angle of like the town of like something to do with kids, whether it's those green spaces like I mentioned or kids activities that they might not ordinarily think of. Um, and that's it. Till the fall anyway. And we are, I guess um, one thing I'll mention, and Nancy knows this already, our annual benefit was always, was originally scheduled for October 14th. It is now going to be October 21st. And that is part of the October for Design timeframe. Um, it's the same day as the tour that Nancy's leading. And so we are coordinating on timing of that. And one interesting thing is that the U.S. Poet Laureate Joy Harjo will be one of the featured performers during that annual benefit at Grace Oh, Farm. wow. Incredible. Great. These picnics, are those like the, the dinners that you used to have at the Commons, but are they? Like the summer version of that. Oh, exactly. I love that. I love that. Wow. Okay. Reminds me, it's time to get out and see the uh, fireflies, Laura. Mm -hmm. Coming up. Coming yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, Jack, Alan, anything you guys want to? Tell us about. Well, I've been uh, quite busy. Um, be, I just have been brought on by, by the um, Price Tower in Oklahoma, believe it or not, uh, a Frank Lloyd Wright building. And they um, are looking to raise uh, uh, money and have asked me to be part of that process. What's been interesting about that is learning about the tourism uh, surrounding that building, which is their, you know, their, uh, you know, main uh, attraction. So it's been kind of a very interesting few weeks for me uh, working on that. So uh, they're looking to raise fifteen million dollars. Wow. So um, yeah, it's been it's been interesting. So are you are you in the United States now? Uh, no, I'm still in Paris, and I'll be back in about a month. Okay. All right. So working, working out of pocket has been, I've been busy. I just sold a house in New Canaan, was involved with that. And then I have a, another thing internationally I'm working on. All right. And Alan, what about you in the PR world? You know, it's busy and, and travel is just back, you know, as, as much as there all, everyone talks about these storm clouds. I mean, they're still seeing it. One of my clients, we had him on CNBC this week from Omni, and he was talking about the shrimp indicator. He said groups are ordering shrimp and raw bars for their <laughs> meetings. And whenever they do that, they see that as the economy is strong. He said when they start moving to like cheese plates, then they start <laughs> to get worried. 
<laughs> but he said there's a lot of seafood and more expensive wines. So that's kind of how they look. But they say group business is strong. I mean, my clients in Las Vegas are saying that. Um, so I don't know. We're all waiting for the shoe to drop. But what we're seeing is the spend is still going on. So. Yeah, I'm hearing that too. I'm hearing Europe this summer is just going to be insane. Crazy. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's absolutely packed. Oh, wow. yeah. They say the big problem this summer is going to be inter-country travel because Heathrow's already announced they're going to strike every single weekend this summer. So <laughs> don't fly out of Heathrow. <laughs> oy. Oy, oy, oy. All right. Well, I know Nancy's always got a ton going on up there. And Laura, you've got all your stuff happening at the chamber? Yeah, I've got a sidewalk sale coming up July 22nd. So don't plan a party for that day because it will be the hottest day of the year. Okay. Um, I'm getting some new interesting vendors. Uh, we're coming out of the, the final uh, shackle of COVID. We've, we're going to open Main Street back up, which we always used to do. Um, and I'm going to try to put some music over there and, and really make that a dynamic space. Um, we've been doing some great networking events. Uh, Meg and the crew at Grace Farms hosted a joint uh, networking with Ridgefield and Wilton Chambers. We had about uh, a little over 100 people there. It was a huge success. Um, and then last night, I hosted one of my quarterly women's networking meetings uh, at the library in the McLaughlin room and the terrace. And it was just awesome. Uh, everyone was so pleased. Um, and we have these incredible views of New Canaan. You can see all, all the steeples. Uh, so that was a big success as well. The library were awesome hosts, as was Grace Farms. Grace Farms was amazing. So um, I think people really want to meet and really want to get together. And um, so that's that's been really great. And so it's sidewalk sale and then on to Taste of New Cane and Stroll. So. Good. John, you got anything? John Matz? Yes, not. All right, well, folks, I'm gonna send you out, um, back to the video discussion, I'm gonna send you out uh, sort of a summary of what we talked about. And if everyone could get back to me, that would be great. And then uh, we won't meet again officially until September 7th, kind of get our summer off. But along that, along that time, I'll be sending you the business development guide and things like that so that you can see it um, in real life. And um, just give me feedback on the on the video idea so that we can get this thing going and not miss any opportunities for, for summer events. Good. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. All right. Have a good All night. Right. See you soon. Bye. Bye.